I think it's kind of uh, apropos today that, uh, that Jesse got to read about the stump of Jesse and the root of Jesse in these Advent lessons. That was really good. Good job, Jesse. Um, I've got a couple of things I'm going to show you, but let me tell you this first. That gospel reading about John the Baptist sometimes, well, maybe oftentimes for us, sounds ominous and daunting with the, you know, the chaff of the wheat being burned with unquenchable fire and things like that, and, and the Messiah coming and sweeping the granary and getting rid of the bad and keeping the good. I want to tell you that that's very, very good news. Because we are both, we have inside of us both the wheat and the chaff. And we find it to be very good news if God says, I want to protect and lift up and nourish and make strong that wheat by burning away the bad, the chaff. I want to get rid of that so I can take you into my hands and I'll be the potter and you can be the clay. I'll be the farmer and you be the wheat. And I'll make you what you're supposed to be. So that's good news. I just want you to hear that. It's not taking half the people of the world out and leaving half the people. We all have wheat in us, and we all have chaff in us. Okay? Good enough? We're going to come back to the gospel. But I want to say, I want to share this with you. We're actually going to focus on Isaiah today. Now, I have a stump here. This is not the stump of Jesse. This is the stump of Andy. (laughs) This came from the woodpile in my backyard. And I brought it in on Thursday so it could thaw out and dry out and everything and didn't make as much of a mess. Well, it's making a mess up here. But we're going to let this be a symbol of the stump of Jesse, okay? The dead stump, out of which grew a living shoot. Have you ever seen anything completely dead out of which something alive is growing? Of course you have. You've seen, you've seen weeds crack through your pavement, your blacktop, right? You've seen trees come out of rocks. It happens. Today, you have seen a tree come out of a brandy bottle. (laughs) Really, I asked my friend Dan to get me a shoot for today, and he also provided this with me. He was out in the woods last summer or spring and ran across this, and here it's a brandy bottle. This is kind of interestingly appropriate and ironic as well. It's a brandy bottle out of which a tree is growing right at the collar of the bottle and the cap. Isn't that interesting? Something dead that now has something living growing out of it and maybe changing it in a good way. Maybe it's really appropriate to put this old brandy bottle up on the altar (laughs) and let the old identity turn into something new with that tree growing out of it. Advent is about that. Advent is is partly about new beginnings. It's about something that's dead, desperately gone. This, this trunk is dead, this stump. I had this on the woodpile for splitting next spring. That's what's going to happen to it. It'll warm the house, you know, or whatever. Have a good campfire in the backyard eventually. But it's dead. And the promise is that new things in God can grow out of dead things, old things, even old brandy bottles. So Advent is about new beginnings. Advent, maybe you can think, is about us in our lives imagining all those things that we grieve over. Maybe it's stuff that we're totally ashamed of and that has threatened to take us down. Or maybe it's the violence in the world or the poverty in the world that we see. We just we grieve over that, and we, 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 we don't want to succumb to the feeling of hopelessness as though that's going to have the final word. So Advent's about new beginnings. The Messiah comes into the world not to wreak vengeance on the world, but to create newness, to redeem a people, to redeem us, to give us new life, to tell us that he promises that in him, Shoots grow out of dead stumps. And then, Advent is also about people being changed. People being transformed. When was the day, do you think, in your life that you were changed the most? You know when it was? 
I'll tell you, I know about all of you. The day that you were changed the most was probably the day that you, a day that you didn't remember. Because most of us were baptized when we were little babies. And the day you came to the font was the day that the Holy Spirit swept into your life and brought you a new God reality and a new God perspective and a new God um, 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 awareness with all the gifts that God gives to you. Now, God was with you when you were conceived. And God was with you when you were born. But God came in a special way when you were baptized. And all the gifts of God flowed right into you. And you were changed. So Advent is also about changed lives. Because people come to God. People come to Jesus Christ in their baptisms and they know that they can put stuff up on the table with God. We call that repenting. They can repent. They can put things up on the table. Sin, guilt, fears, griefs. It's not all sin related. Griefs, anything that is hurting and threatening and looming. They can put it up on the table with God and they know that this God of ours comes to wash it away, to cleanse it, and to give us newness, to make us new people. Here's what I'd like you to do. Make the sign of the cross in your forehead right now and repeat after me. I am baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I am baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now do it again. And repeat after me, I have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You are sealed by a Holy Spirit, by the living Spirit of the living Christ, our Messiah. You are sealed by that Holy Spirit so that every single day, Remembering your baptism, you can come before your Lord, our Lord, and you can repent. You can put your sins and guilts and fears and weaknesses at the moment up on the table with him. And he will take them from you. He'll forgive some. He'll grace some. He'll be the one who burns away the chaff so that you, the grain of wheat, can grow again and not be encumbered by it. And you become a new person. You become changed. And then you live your life out in the world in that day and every other day in a changed way with new hope. Can new shoots come out of old dead things in Christ? Mm -hmm. Can new life come after death in Christ? Yes? Can shame, things that we're ashamed of, be wiped and washed away and a new person come out of that in Jesus Christ? Yes. Can guilt be driven away by Christ and his redeeming grace and we grow out of that as new, hopeful people? Yes. This is the Lord that comes to us as a Messiah, the Messiah. This is what Advent's about. The Holy Spirit sweeps into you in your baptism and promises you this again and again and again. The new can come after old endings. New life always comes in Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you one minute, and all I want you to do is just sit where you are and repent. Repent. Repent just means to turn around and walk away, but it also means to put all these things up on the table, things that make us afraid or guilty. And I want you to do that right now, just for one minute, and know that you are with your Lord and that he loves you and that he's coming to bring you a new beginning again and change your life from this moment on. And then we're going to sing to close the sermon. I'll just give you one minute to, to be quiet and silent as we meditate.
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold.